Hello everybody live on in here and today I'm bringing you some of the uh, potential armory upgrade leaks and supposedly five brand new relics that are coming out with the next invasion DLC and I do apologize if I sound like garbage because I have been sick most of the day and uh, well, let's just say it hasn't really got a whole lot better. So I just decided to go ahead and get this video out there. Because I don't know when I'm going to be better. And I would prefer this video be out before the actual DLC comes out. Now, I can't you say 100% if this is actually, you know, true or legit. But the original information I saw was on charlieintel.com. Which I will provide the link in the description below. But I will do have a sh few pictures to show that um, my friend sent me off of the actual PC game. So, without further ado, let's get into these potential armory upgrades that will be coming out on Tuesday. Now, I did just want to throw this image in there right quickly because one of my friends is actually colorblind and he says that he can obviously he has no idea what the leper even looks like because apparently like the orange glow for him does not show up on these cryptids so I just figured I would take a screenshot of the leper and for this leper challenge and uh, put it in this video so just in case anybody else is colorblind or just wondering what the leper looks like he looks like a hunter that has no color and uh, there you go you know he's here for our first potential Armory upgrade to keep valid attachments and the uh, the cost is this upgrade requires invasion map pack which so we really don't know how much it's going to cost yet but that says attachments transfer if they are valid for the new weapon now this was one thing I always had an issue with uh, before really any of the this came out was uh, you know I would walk around and search all the search boxes completely deck out you know my assault rifle or like SMG and they get a shotgun challenge or actually more of the vice versa I deck out my bulldog shotgun and then they'll give me like a stupid LMG challenge and I end up having to buy the M27 and losing all of my great attachments on my weapon this however will make actual locker weapons useful again because now I don't have to worry about just giving up my locker key weapon it will make really any attachment you find you, you know usable especially if it's like a muzzle break unless you get a sniper rifle challenge then your muzzle break is not going to transfer over which will really suck but other than that I mean this is going to be probably in my opinion the most expensive tooth upgrade in this uh, new set of upgrades so this next one is probably the one I personally am most excited about and that is the magnum ACOG attachment and it says Magnum Pistols will now have the ACOG equipped. Now, I don't know. I was always one <laughs> that when I found an ACOG in game, I was just like, why can I not put this on my Magnum? Because, I mean, in multiplayer, you can have a Magnum with an ACOG. Why can't I have one here? And now, I don't have to ask that question anymore. Because this will be the very first upgrade I will buy because this is the one I am the happiest about because if you know me I mean if you watched any of the other videos on my channel and I am using a, some sort of pistol 90 to 95 percent of the time it is the Magnum and I love that pistol and I have had many many questions as to why in the world I love it and one day I will get a video out explaining all the pistols and why it is my favorite but enough rambling about that. I'm super happy about the ACOG. Let's get on to our next image. This next armory upgrade is called No Snare. And it says with this upgrade, Hunter and Seeker Cryptids will no longer snare players with their attacks. Now, it's not a hugely noticeable thing in the game, but when you are running from something and they hit you in the back whenever you're running from them, it is like a little moment of stagger basically and this is probably going to make it where you just don't get staggered you don't even feel the hit and then your health bar goes down and I feel like that's probably what this upgrade is going to do this is probably around a maybe a 10 teeth upgrade I wouldn't think it would be any more than that but it's alright uh, it's not really something I would have expected 
Because, you know, I don't really notice the Hunter and Seeker scenario really being that bad. But, uh, you know, okay, why not? Let's get on to our next, uh, next one. And this one is called IMS Flaming Pools. This is when equipped. The IMS explosions will leave lingering fire pools. Now, the kind of confuses me as to why two of the five upgrades that they're doing are IMS ones. Now, this one, I mean, it'll it'll be a great attachment. I feel like it'll be like the fire, probably like the propane tanks leave behind, kind of. Probably won't be exactly like that but it'll act similar to that it may not look like that at all but that's what I'm picturing it to be as and I figured it'll give the IMS you know that little bit of extra something something that you know it's lacking but I feel like the IMS was good before it was one I actually used a lot more than most others but this will actually work well as long as the IMS along with the IMS fast trigger um, which I'll get to here in a second but this will work well with the little IMS glitch, that, or technique as I call it, where you can uh, pick up and drop your IMS over and then pick it up and drop it and pick it up and drop it, and it'll pretty much rapid fire your uh, your IMS, and it's really fun to do whenever you're kind of running away from something, or walking away with a ride shield on your back, whichever you prefer. But this will basically make your IMS just that much better. And for the last one, or the fifth one, it is the IMS fast trigger. When that shortens the time it takes the IMS to detect nearby enemies. So basically it's going to make your IMS shoot even faster now. Even as one of the points that you put into your IMS, it makes it trigger faster. So I'm guessing this will just stack with that. It'll trigger even faster than that already does. So this is once again just another one of those little things to well, make your IMS probably that much better. I'm going to go out of limb and say the IMS fast trigger will probably take maybe uh, 5 or 10 teeps. I would prefer it to be 5, it would probably be 10 among them. I bet the IMS flaming pools will probably be 20. And yeah, most likely, because the flaming rod shield, I mean, that was 20. And I'd say it's probably about the equivalent of that. Now, the Magnum ACOG, I bet, will be 5, because most people hate the Magnum for some odd reason. Yet I love it. And like I said on the first one, the uh, actual m um, multiple attachment, the one that will allow you to put your attachments uh, carry over to different guns, I have a feeling that's probably going to be like, you know, 30 teeth, 40 teeth, somewhere in there. It's not going to be cheap. That's going to be the most expensive upgrade out of all these. At least I feel like it should be. Anyways, now that's our other, you know, five basic new upgrades. Now there's five new relics being added that we are going to go over now. This first one is called Earn Your Keep and it is no ammo type or team support items available and no scavenging, crafting, or pick up items from deployed boxes. So basically you cannot scavenge anything, you cannot choose an ammo type, all you can throw out is normal ammo and you have no team support items available. Now, if you're the type of person that never really levels up to team support and never really throws that ammo, then this is going to be an extremely easy relic for you to run because, well, you don't have to upgrade either of those. And, of course, me, being the kind of person I am, I don't often scavenge because, well, I used to lose my attachments, so I might scavenge more now. But if you don't like to scavenge and you don't really care about ammo types or team support, you're just like, hey, I have the other people on the team to do this, so screw them, I'm not going to do it, then this is your relic to run. And our next relic is called Limited Ammo. And ammo refills, weapon pickups will give you less ammo, so basically any kind of thing that gives you any sort of ammo, you get less ammo out of. It'll probably be half ammo or 75% ammo or somewhere in there. Whenever it actually comes out, I will release a, a video um, going over it, you know, just getting all the exact data and percentages. But this is a good one if you run equalizers, turrets, um, MK32, etc, etc. And you don't really use a lot of weapons, or if you get rage your pistol to where you can carry two primary weapons. Because then you have two weapons that will, you know, get your ammo put into, so you really don't need as much ammo. So really, this is another pretty easy relic to run, I feel like. Anyways, let's get on to the third one. 
This one is called No Machines and you cannot have any equalizers or strike packages. Now this one is this one's painful because for me I love things like my IMS, my Vulture, my Trinity Rocket, I love my War Machine or MK32 or whatever you want to call it. And I love my death machine. I love all of those things. So this one for me, it's going to be a little bit harder for me to run. I mean, I can do it, but I really love using those kind of things. And, you know, people that are running the grenade turret, they love it so, so much. Like a lot of people. I mean, they're just kind of insane about the grenade turret. But they will not be running this one, I can guarantee you. <laughs> this next one is called Stand Your Ground. You move slower. And there is no reloading while sprinting. This would be painful for me because I love, I've gotten to where I'm so used to reloading and sprinting at the same time that it's really hard for me to not do anymore. Plus moving slower is just, I mean one of the main reasons I run medic a lot is because I move quicker and that makes me happy. Moving slower would just, I, I feel like I would need to run a tank class with this just to uh, make me feel like a big you know beefy tank even though it really wouldn't be that but you know that's what I would like to uh, think of myself as if I do that anyway moving on the last relic, relic is called fragile and you have slower health regeneration no regeneration while sprinting and it enables falling damage so this one was interesting because no regeneration while sprinting is kind of a big deal because Whenever you're needing to run away is when you have low health is when you really need your regeneration and that's when you need to be sprinting away. So this one is, I feel, would make you have to have a little bit of a gameplay type of change, which would definitely be a big thing for me. Anyways, that is the, uh, the fifth new relic. Anyway guys, thank you very, very much for watching. I'm sorry I did not get this out sooner. I was hoping I would sound a little bit less sick, but, um, you know, I eventually was just like, screw it, I'm just going to get this out there as soon as I can, because, you know, I just, I wanted you guys to have the information as soon as possible. And, uh, <laughs> thank you very much for tolerating my sick voice for this entire video. I do apologize. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Rogue Leader again for getting me these images as I was... <laughs> sleeping most of this day and yeah just really sick As you can see the 509 kills there I kinda was mean and spam the MK because that thing is really overpowered I'll have a video about that coming out within the next couple days anyways I hope you enjoyed the content if you did feel free to check out some other videos I do love doing analysis type things uh, especially with Extinction, I'll probably do future co-op modes that come out, of course, but right now Extinction is the main thing. Um, follow me on Twitter if you ever wanted to do some testing help. This is Life on in here, and I am out.